Yeah, I tell everyone I meet in my life about AMS. Everywhere I go, I'm like, oh my gosh, I went to this great school. Anyone I meet who's like my age and is interested in teaching, I'm like, oh, you, you're interested in teaching? How about middle school? If you're interested in a private school, there's this great school in the woods. It's wonderful. You should go teach there. And anyone I know with you know, my age, student kids, I'm always like, so I know it's weird. I know it's scary to think of sending your 12-year-old off to a boarding school, but there's this brilliant school that I went to, um, and I loved it, and it was the greatest experience of my life. Well, it's known as cutting edge because um, right now one of the greatest interests among Montessori teachers is extending the experience into the middle school years, and Montessori had a particular vision uh, for children of all ages, which was to provide them with the education that was developmentally appropriate for them. In the middle school years, there's very little in our educational system that does that. So Montessori's vision for those middle school years was children are growing and expanding physically, intellectually, imaginatively, emotionally, and it's a time of their life when they need a large arena in which to express themselves and explore themselves. So her, idea was a, her ideal was a farm school where children could have meaningful work, grow things that would have a market in the world and um, actually feel themselves to be moving into adulthood. I feel like I'm learning in some ways more what I need for life from AMS than from a public school. Because AMS, you know, it teaches academics too, but it teaches more than academics, which is pretty much all a public school teaches. It teaches it teaches um, how to live in a community, a close, tight community. It teaches, if you've never had siblings, how to deal with siblings or how to have a roommate and how to work out boundaries. You know, it cultures your interest. It, you know, gives you a natural playground. It teaches you gardening. It teaches you, you know, just all these things that you can't get from a normal public school or private school. And learning math in particular so many students say, why am I learning this? This doesn't matter. This isn't important. But when you start looking at things in the context of the world, you start actually maybe enjoying math and loving math. Um, and certainly when you get into the real world, questions don't come at you simply, like in a math textbook or in any textbook. They're not simple. They've got all these little weird technicalities and things that you have to work out. And at AMS, especially with things like field trips, where you're working out all the fine details, you get experience in how to, this is a scenario in the real world, and then breaking that down and saying, these are the problems that I have, and, and breaking them into steps so that you can solve each of those problems individually instead of already having you know, the package problem to solve. What I think works so well with this age group is that um, although the academics are part of everyday um, experience here, they are a very integrated part and I think that that's really the only way that you get anything into this age group's brain. They, they're so social, they're so into the experience of these changing bodies and this growing mind and um, it has to be integrated otherwise it just, just flies away. When these kids go to take like the SAT or their end of grade test and there's going to be a question about simple machines, most kids, they learn about simple machines, they're sitting in a classroom. When I went to AMS, I learned about simple machines by moving logs in the woods. And now I remember about simple machines because I learned by doing it. Man, I really like this project because it was just a chance to, first of all, this class was, um, it was a class that you could actually be counted in high school as a civics class. I got really interested in researching just about the country. I learned a lot more about laws that have put in place, laws that have expired, different presidents we've had. 
And it's really been interesting to learn something that actually like really relates to the country that I live in and just to research so much stuff that you know, if we were actually president, what we could do, what we could change, what we could make better. It was a real cool project because we just learned so much about everything that was real. The student to staff ratio is obviously a huge benefit and because of that the teachers can actually focus on each student independently and help them learn about their own learning styles. And so one of the greatest things I learned from AMS was how I as an individual learn. And so then when I got to high school and then again in college, I could really understand what I needed to do to study. Coming from teaching public schools, uh, I really find AMS liberating because the students uh, interact much more and we have smaller classes which allows me to interact with students much more. And we can have a better relationship both as uh, as people, as teacher to student, and we can have a better relationship with the material. To create lifelong learners, I think what we need to do first of all is uh, make sure the kids are interested in learning. And in order to be interested in it, they have to have a good time doing it, and they also have to learn. And one of the things that really empowers this school is that we really, really try to engage students' interests and guide that in a constructive way that will then facilitate further interest in something else and hopefully open them up to other avenues of learning. One of the problems that we've been working on this past week is looking at some equations that actually solve how long your bones are if you know how tall you are. And one of the students back here, a lot of the students drew themselves, traced themselves on paper and then took the inches, uh, this girl, Mahela, was five feet, five inches tall, converted that to centimeters, and came up with, she's 163 centimeters tall. So from that, um, we used some equations that forensic scientists developed, and you can figure out how long your tibia, your femur, your radius, and your humerus bones are by knowing how tall you are. Just doing the artistic, you know, part of it was really fun for a lot of them, and took them out of that fear of I don't know how into I can display how I do my work. What, what I really have been impressed with is that she was a person that came here without a love of math at all. She didn't think she could do math. She didn't like math. Um, I have seen a huge change in that. She now feels as though she can do math. She has a better attitude about it. I think she sees it more as a game and it was so helpful to her to not have this punitive um, you're not able to do this, therefore you fail. Basically, she was able to go back and work through the problems until she understood them. And now she has this tremendous base for math that I know she wouldn't have gotten in the public school. She wasn't getting in the public school. We had to use tutors just so that she could keep up. In a nutshell, my philosophy of teaching language arts is that kids need to write. Uh, the more they write, uh, the easier it is for them to do it. And the more they understand how it works at an intuitive level. And the same thing with reading. They need to read as much as they can, uh, and the more they read, the better they get. November is National Novel Writing Month, and our students are getting very interested in this. It's, this is something that I did last year, and the attempt is to write 50,000 words during the month of November, uh, starting with a fresh piece of fiction, uh, something that you have not worked on before, and produce a novel in a single month. And uh, it's worked. A lot of students want to take this on. They have begun making plans. They've begun uh, outlining characters and plot. And uh, many students are really excited. They come up to me and they tell me, you know, the story that they're going to write or, oh, this character, he's going to do this or he's going to come after, you know, so and so. And everybody who's interested, we're going to get together and start writing and we're going to have writing parties and we're going to sit together for as long as we can stand it and write and write and write. Uh, all of us aiming for our personal goal. I mean this particular age, there's not another one like it. Um, and I taught sixth grade for a little while so I know what, what that change is about. But meant most of the, the really stark personal decisions are made during this period in the kids growing up, you know, during that 7th, 8th, ninth grade. They, they go from they're still a little bit of a child in 7th grade, but they're thinking about working towards it, you know, adulthood. 
and then and by the time they're ninth grade, they really have made a lot of the choices that they're going to be, you know. But at this time, you know, things like how they're going to interact with, with the opposite sex, you know, and, you know, is in, in schools they thought about, you know, uh, sex and physical relationships is the, is the only thing that's what you go for, you know. Whereas here, they learn they can actually have friends who are the opposite sex, which is, you know, ideal. They don't have the pressures of, you know, of the television constantly telling them that you need to buy this, you need to wear this, you need to have this, you know. Um, all those things they're, they're sort of uh, sheltered from and they can allow the other parts of the world to, to enter in and, and, um, and take it, become a part of them. Well, electives are just like side classes, classes about your interests, really, that you would, normally wouldn't get in school or in a normal school. Um, like there was a ethics class, or an ethics elective, which basically pushed your boundaries, study ethics. There was a jewelry elective, where you learned to make jewelry. There was the belly dance elective. There was a hip hop dance elective. There was a soap and cheese making elective even. There is so much art, I feel, in this school compared to a, a regular public school. Um, they get a chance to experience um, many, uh, many venues of creativity. Um, for instance, my oldest son is a dancer, professional dancer. He's a modern dancer. He dances with Palabalus. And he would never have been there if it were not for Arthur Morgan. He bumped into dance here. And here he had the freedom of exploring that and expressing that part of himself without fearing that he was going to be stigmatized or teased um, by the rest of the community. Um, there is a great deal of music. The, the day starts with singing, and so the kids are really um, uh, exposed to, to music. Um, there's metalworking, uh, glass blowing, uh, 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 pottery. Um, there's always some creative activity that the kids are involved in, all kinds of electives, and even um, you know presentations for the regular schoolwork uh, often entails a great deal of, of uh, creativity, and they pull all of these influences that they have around from the in the community and put it forth in their particular project, whether it be a school project or an art project or something they want to do for the house or gifts that they give each other, um, say, around the holidays. Um, it's just this constant creativity. We did a Saturday night activity and Jeff came in with a bunch of, you know, computers and video cameras and we did claymation which was really cool um, it was a great opportunity um, he had the resource of you know App State and those cameras and computers and technology and learned a lot about you know just I mean you see all these movies uh, that are done with claymation and you don't realize how hard it is until you actually try it yourself and do some short clips of stuff <laughs> Um, at AMS we don't have formal testing. We don't give grades, but we do extensive written evaluations and we have academic open houses at the end of the six-week unit that are a chance for kids to um, be held accountable for the work that they've learned over the course of six weeks. And at these open houses we invite community members, we invite their parents, um, we might invite other school groups to come out so that they're really showing the rest of the world what they've learned over the past six weeks, not just their teachers. Final preparations here? Yep. What you got going? This is a motor. I'm just making sure that it works the way it's supposed to. And then here's a single coil motor. Are they working? Yeah, they're both working. Tell me how it works. Well, as it um, turns, the brushes there switch the way that it is, the polarity of the mm -hmm. magnet. So as it switches, it pushes away from the magnet on the bottom. Now, did you, did you make this yourself? Yeah. Did, was it difficult to get it just right? 
Yeah, I had I tried making this bottom magnet out of electromagnet and it didn't work. And then I switched it to a permanent magnet and it works really good. I'm not aware of so many things that she does here, but I wasn't aware that she was the only student in the, the Camp Silo Garden internship. Um, and she walked a whole group of people, it was mostly adults, staff and parents. She walked us all through the garden, step by step, and here's what we planted here, and here's why we planted this, and here's where the food goes, and here's who buys it, and here's how it's processed. And She knew the whole thing. It wasn't just plant this seed and watch something grow. It was plant the seed, watch it grow, know who buys it, know how it's cooked, know where it goes. She had a sense of her context. Um, we've been um, weeding and planting and transplanting and um, making more beds out there. Um, we put manure on the beds and then we plant some stuff in it. And these are some of these I've planted. Um, let's see, this one I planted, this is called um, Love Lies Bleeding. It's going to be really cool and it grows up. I think when I see this, what I, what I see is um, all of the frustration and struggle that came before it. <laughs> and now it's just sort of erupting into, um, into a project that Mary's like into. Like as opposed to like struggling against and fighting against and doing because she has to. Like now it's something that's hers and it looks like her. Why'd you choose a dandelion? Um, well, I don't know. She told me to make something 3D and I stand there and I, they're all over the place right now. So I was like, well, that'd be pretty cool looking. I might eventually at the open house have some like hanging so that they're blowing, like hanging from the fishing line or something. That's how I might just uh-huh. Does it relate to the story at all? Well, kind of. The story is kind of about, like, people and how they treat you and, like, how you got to get over some things, you know, and, like, just let them blow away in the wind. We have three days, six days, and then um, we have a five-day service trip and an 18-day field trip. Wow, I have a lot of stories from that. Um, and an eight-day um, biking, hiking, or canoe trip. I think the important thing about being here in, in this natural environment is that you have to deal with it. It's just part of the everyday experience. They might be on a hike and the weather may not uh, cooperate. You know, it may be very, very hot, but you have a certain amount of days in which you have to complete your hike and so you, you move on. I think that we forget that we're, we are organisms who live on this planet often. She's just gotten a broader um, experience for uh, what it means to, to be contributing to a household. Uh, the, the new quality in her that's different is that she's willing to contribute in terms of picking up her dishes or washing her own clothes and she's doing it out of a sense of caring instead of a sense of obligation. And that's, that's been wonderful as a parent. Work is a really big part of AMS. Um, it's probably a third of what we do here. We don't have a janitor, we don't have people who clean up the grounds or the kitchen, so we do chores and we do work projects. And work projects is keeping AMS campus nice. It's cleaning buildings, it's mowing the yard, it's we heat all our buildings with wood, so it's splitting wood a lot. Um, you know, it's cleaning up the shop when it gets dirty, it is building a new shed for wood, and just, you know, continuing to clean and improve the school. I've definitely learned how to split wood uh, a lot better than I did. I learned a lot of electrician, like uh, skills, plumbing, um, carpentry, um, how to work on like lawnmower engines and stuff and get them fixing again and just like you know logic stuff about how to fix things and taking them apart and remembering how to put them back together. Here you don't just do schoolwork. 
it's more than schoolwork. It's not just a school. You get so much other experience, you know, we have goats out there. We have a bunch of people that, and it's a small school that you know people so much better than you do at other schools. You know, they're family. You spend more time with them because it's a boarding school. Um, it's just more like a com community. Like our classes, they're like five students in each class, and so you can like work with everybody. Very interesting cause science, cl science class actually was a first aid slash science class, which taught you the function of human body parts, but it also taught you how to like heal them. It's like a wilderness first respond class. So, like almost every day someone was picked to be hurt and um, they would have to put some makeup on and um, there'd be, and then there were the two rescuers and the rest of the zoo. Okay, so now, now we're gonna just start the process. You want to check to see if he's bleeding. I think since you're going to be a primary rescuer, you need to put some protection on. It's going to be okay, Kian. There's so much freedom here to do what you want to, to follow your interest. Um, the teachers actually see you for you, not just like some little drone of the student. Um, there's a lot of responsibility, but it's always rewarding. It's just, you know, a really great place to hone your interest. See, I've never seen this happen. Oh, cool, two corn screwing. See, this is corn, and there's like, see that, that's a corn seed right there. It's growing inside, and there's another one, and another one. Oh, and they're sprouting? Yeah. And there's another one. Oh, cool, they are, huh? No, like, eat this one. Well, I think it's great. I mean, I, I think it's the most natural way for me is to be working as a group and talking about what we come across um, in the garden, whether it's the Mexican bean beetles or corn that's overripe and germinating. Um, I mean, we really, spending a few weeks out here, you really get to see the cycles going on, the composting happening and, um, you know, the germination and the flowering and this going to seed of various plants. Um, we're baking bread right now. We're just sort of figuring out how we're baking bread. And this is a full wheat bread. We're letting it rise. We've oiled the pans. And how long does it have to rise for? Um, I think at least 25 minutes. I'm not sure. It's a long time. It has to rise twice. Once right here. Then we'll smush it down and put it in the pans and it'll rise again. And we might do it three times because the last loaf we did was sort of hard. But once we get them ready and all, we're gonna put them in plastic bags and take them to the co-op and we're going to sell them. And right now we're figuring out how much like a cup of flour costs and like cost us and how much, how many cups of flour it is, so how much a loaf of bread would cost. We have these turkeys that we raise and those who want to get to slaughter them and I was one of those people so we, um, you know, we kill the turkeys, and then we cook the turkeys, and then we have like 10 Thanksgiving turkeys ready, 10 or 12. And everybody's family comes, and we have a huge, gigantic Thanksgiving dinner. And every table gets, you know, part of each turkey. We all eat, we all have fun, we all talk. And it's just a giant, giant family Thanksgiving dinner here you know um, we knew Malcolm was going to be having fun having adventure he's going to be around people who cared about him he's going to be taken care of he's going to be well fed things that you know um, that every parent really wants to do and all of his needs from the social spiritual intellectual you know we're going to be taken care of and uh, I mean what else can a parent ask for AMS is a boarding school and about half of our students are boarders and all of our boarding houses are just houses they're not dormitories they um, actually in the school policy these are the homes of staff members who live here so in my home we have four boarding students uh, most houses have typically four sometimes five students and maybe an intern will live in the house house parents are someone that you live with so they really get to know you really well and 
but they're also, they're not your parents, and they're someone who's a little bit closer to you in age, so they have a slightly better understanding of where you are in your life. So they're definitely a great person to go to when you're feeling anxious or when you're having troubles. Well, it's family life, but it's conscious family life. Everybody in our culture now talks about the dysfunctional family. And what I see here is functional families. There is a kind of consciousness about the family interactions. There's a sense of what are we doing in everything we do. When I arrived at the Arthur Morgan School in 1980 and 81, I entered um, probably as a more troubled uh, child than most, and sad child than most. Uh, there was, I, I wasn't a very trusting kid. Um, I, I didn't understand um, my social place in the world, my social responsibilities, my responsibilities within a community. And the year, at, my one year at AMS really changed the course of my life. At AMS, I learned to trust. Um, I learned that my actions had consequences. Uh, I learned what family meant and that it had a broader, broader meaning than just maybe your birth parents and your siblings, but family really means those who you're closest to in your life and, and that you love deeply. And to this day, um, I, I really define my sense of family through my experience at AMS. Um, all School Meeting is this really wonderful space where students can bring issues to the school and help make decisions about how the school is going to be run or things that are going to go on, go on in the school. So the students really have this, this power in, in some sense over the space that they're living in. It's really exciting to, to watch them learn how to use that space. And instead of, instead of identifying a problem and saying, hey, this is the most horrible thing in the world, they say, hey, this is the most horrible thing in the world, and how can I change it? How can I fix it? So the students, instead of just being complainers, they become problem solvers. My first year we did a trip to Penn Center, which is this little community down in South Carolina, the Scullo community, and we do service work down there. We did it my first year, and we want to do it again my second year, um, and we usually do it every other year. But we were trying for it, and we wrote out this whole proposal, um, and it was one of my fellow classmates, Elliot, who did a lot of work on you know, gas prices and what it would cost and, you know, which vans we would take and, you know, worked out all the details and, I mean, down to who would do chores when and what meals and stuff. But there's an example of someone taking on a, you know, non-expected, you know, you don't have to do this. It's like, well, I don't care, I'm going to do it anyway. Um, and going all the way through with it and doing hard work and, you know, academic work. Field trips are just a really a really unique thing that the school has. They're when the school splits into three groups and there's the school has three main vans that we would use. And each one of those groups goes to a different place in the United States in a different van and um, goes and does a different thing. And it usually involves service and learning, but also a lot of fun. Field trips were definitely my favorite time. I got to know people better. I got way close up information that I never would have gotten, you know, sitting here reading a textbook. On the 18 day field trips, she was extremely excited about what she saw in West Virginia. She got off the plane when she came home after that experience and she said, Mom, we're changing all our light bulbs to the curly ones because they draw so much less power and in West Virginia they're blowing the tops off mountains to get coal. So she feels capable of doing the things that she wants to do in the world. Um, in college, I majored in chemistry at Kenyon College, and um, I'm hoping to go to vet school in the next couple of years. Like all my life, anyone I meet, they tell, tell me vet school is hard to get into. But at AMS, it's one of those places that you say, hey, this is what I want to do. And the staff really make an effort to say, OK, well, how can we make that happen? Um, and so AMS really put that mentality in my mind that if there's a challenge ahead of me, instead of just saying, oh, it's going to be hard, so I might as, not, might as well not try. I say, well, it's going to be hard. What can I think of that I can do that will make it easier and make it possible? So what was great about my 
AMS academic experience was that I really learned to think that at every point all through the day and everything that we were doing, we were being challenged to think about what we were doing, what its impact was on other people, what its impact was on the world. Um, we were being forced to synthesize our ideas with other people's ideas. Um, you, you know, the process of asking adolescence to reach consensus is such an intellectually challenging exercise. And when I got to high school, I found that I was, and I went to a very academically rigorous high school, I found that I was able to think much more deeply about things than my fellow students who had gone to more traditional middle schools. Um, in terms of college, I went to Harvard, another friend from AMS went to Yale, Lots of kids went to UNC, a couple of kids went to NYU. You know, when I applied to Harvard, my essay was about AMS and what going to AMS had taught me about how to learn, how to live in the world, um, how it had affected my whole relationship to education, thinking of education, as Elizabeth Morgan said, or I think it was she who said it, um, as life itself, not just as preparation. Like what I'm doing for the book that I'm writing this year, um, I'm writing the background of the characters. So, and in terms of what we're doing now, um, I'm a writer. My friend Heidi is a tenured professor at SUNY. Um, my friend Susie runs an art business. Um, Issa's a doctor. Ellie's a nurse. Um, and and part of what I you know. Uh, think is important is the fact that I know what all these people are doing and I'm still in touch with them and we're still very, very close. The change in Peter is that he's really become more himself. It's a little like that idea of sculpture as cutting away all the parts of the rock that aren't the sculpture. I think in some ways AMS gives kids the liberty to release that, that mask, the persona that uh, so many of us, not just children, but adults too, put up to defend ourselves from the world because we're afraid we'll be hurt. And AMS allows people to drop those defenses. And by dropping them, you see suddenly this amazing person underneath. In your normal public school or private school, you know, the first thing they ask for David is, where's his medication? You know? And we said, well, we don't believe in that. You know, we like David the way he is. And so when he came here, he could he could be himself. It's it's really, I guess you could say, it's an alternative to to Riddler, because you know you're grounded, you're um, you know the lifestyle, the food. Uh, we don't know, but it worked. I brought a kid here who was depressed, who did not like school, and who was not who was not going to succeed in the way that we were going. She just wasn't going to. So it's, that's changed. I mean, she's, she's coming away. She's sparkling and happy. I think AMS has made me a lot more self-confident. When I came here at first, I was really shy. Like, I probably wouldn't be doing this right now because I'd be absolutely freaked out. But it's really taught me that I have a voice more than, you know, just sitting there and not saying anything. I could say something and someone's going to listen to me. And if they don't, then I'll try again. You really have to seek out those places where community is possible and look for environments that are consciously and conscientiously striving to create community because that's absolutely essential to build healthy people. We're, we're social creatures and we don't grow right without community. She's happy, she's in her element, she's comfortable, she's ready to, you know, leap off from this, this foundation that she's had here. The spirit of AMS, the attitude that everyone has which is a real precious thing. No one else has this but this school. And it's just to live simply and love what you're doing. And no matter what, you have to get into what you're doing because if you don't, then that's just wasting your life.
this is this is a safe place. This is a place where uh, you're going to be taken care of and you're going to have adventure. This is the first school I've ever been to where people are sad that it's the last week of school. <laughs> and people aren't like, yes, I can't wait to get out. People are like, oh, I don't want to leave. <laughs> and I don't want to leave either. He said one word.